their surgeries that that uh, surgery that have uh, surgeries that have gone on over the last year or so. Seventy grand just on a facelift. It's a lot. People are like, oh, she looks so beautiful. She's really coming to her own. You'd probably look okay if you had hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, spent on your face by the best plastic surgeons that Hollywood could afford. There'd be some subtle changes that made you feel slightly better about yourself, too. They're like, oh, so beautiful as a woman. It's really coming to You see the glow of womanhood. No, you don't. You see the glow of $70,000 of plastic surgery tightening things up. 70 G's. But, you know, to put that figure in perspective, take that total amount Kris Jenner has spent on her facelifts. Take the total amount that Kris Jenner has spent on her facelifts uh, and subtract about 20 million. And there you have Caitlyn Jenner's 70 G's. What, what else? Uh, the Sharknado 3 trailer is out. Yes. <laughs> Did you see one uh, or two? I, I saw, you know, I saw one. And, um, it was actually my New Year's resolution one year. You know, I do those realistic resolutions mm-hmm. at uh, on Twitter right around the holidays. It was, uh, I will stop letting um, Sharknado, I will stop letting the movie Sharknado prevent me from going to the beach. And it's not like I think Sharknado is a real thing that could actually happen. I don't think sharks are going to be swimming down the street. Although I think there was some sort of instance of that in Texas with the big floods recently. But, you know, I don't think that's something we really have to worry about in any way, shape or form. But just like the idea of sharks in the water have put me off going to the beach. I, uh, I, got, um, I got a Snapchat the other day from someone who was at the beach and... Um, Someone who was at the beach and someone shouted shark and this like five foot shark was like running up on her and she had to and it's funny because they uh, that five foot shark someone that was fishing at the beach the one that ran up on her when she got out of the water. Um, a, a fisherman caught it, and so she Snapchatted out pictures of this shark that had come after her that was on the beach. And it was no joke, man. Like, that thing had teeth. It could have easily tore her up, no problem. And I was like, there it is. There, that's why That's why I don't go in the water. So, yeah. No, Sharknado actually kind of gave me the screaming heebie-jeebies. And the Sharknado 3 trailer is out. For the uninitiated, uh, Sharknado is that annual event that reminds us that Tara Reid is still alive. They're like, okay, prop her up. Let's go. Dust that thing off. Yeah. <laughs> uh, also clean the rest of her. Sure. Nah. Go on. Josh Duggar's sisters mm. say their brother was a little too curious about girls. Yeah, yeah. Josh Duggar's sisters went on the record saying that uh, their brother, who abused and molested them, was, and I quote, too curious about girls. Which is kind of like saying Bill Cosby's a little too curious about naps. Go on. According to TMZ, for the past three years, a Ukrainian makeup artist has been secretly married to Fred Durst of Limp Bizkit. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. You know, it's so funny because, like, I saw pictures, and I was like, wow, Fred Durst's wife is, I mean, as you would imagine, him being the I saw that girl official. in person. Yeah. Is she, like, uncommonly beautiful in person? Yeah. Well, you think it's his his personal assistant running around because of uh, the age gap. Right. <laughs> but, uh... Well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Fred Durst was one of those guys that looked like he was 40 when he was 20, though. So it's like, you know. Yeah, look at him today. But, <laughs> when he is 40. Like, I, I looked at the, oh, he's way past that now. The dude, he's, yeah, I think he's pushing 50 at this stage in the game. Wow. Microphone check. One, two, one, two. Um, but uh, <laughs> it was funny because I was looking at her. I was like, wow, she's actually very pretty. And then I realized she's a makeup artist. So who the hell knows what kind of mess is going on underneath all of that? Like, change the word pretty that, to good and talented. Oh, yeah, no, you really don't know. Any, any any chick that's really really good at makeup, you got to kind of question what's going on underneath the shellac. Sometimes it can be a pleasant surprise. Sometimes it can just be a surprise. But yeah, for the past three years, a Ukrainian makeup artist has been secretly married to Fred Durst of Limp Bizkit. Of course. If you were married to Fred Durst, you'd probably want to keep it a secret, too. So, anyways, go on. Uh, The Women's World Cup is now underway. Right, which is great news for people who enjoy watching kickball but wish it was ten times slower and infinitely less exciting. Go on. (laughs) Uh, People in relationships 
spend $3,600 more a year than single people. Yeah. Oh. So uh, being in a relationship costs you more than just your soul? There you go. I wonder if most of that is spent on therapy. Do you feel like you spend more money because you're in a relationship, Funkhauser? Yes. Without a doubt. But I mean, like, if you're in a relationship and you're in a, dom- especially if you're in a domestic partnership, you know, like you are with your, uh, like, you might spend $3,600 more a year going on dates. But I have to imagine by splitting rent and bills and stuff like that, you save more than 3600 bucks a year. Like, if, like, if you pay half the rent and your rent is like 1500 bucks a month and you're paying 700 instead of 1500 well, that, you know, it, it, the relationship pays for itself really quickly as long as you have someone that's contributing, right? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Sure. <laughs> is your girlfriend listening today? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Moving right along. Hi, hi girlfriend. Uh, a, a Mississippi family was arrested for che- cheering at their daughter's high school graduation. Yeah. Uh, did you have the support of your parents growing up? Did, did you feel yeah, like you had the support of your family growing up? Yeah, but they're not pom-poms and stuff going, you go. I mean, you but I, did you feel like you had the support, though? And and people listening, do you, were, mm. do you feel like you had the support? Like, if you had the support of, you know, parents, whether it's your nuclear family or your extended family or, or what have you, if you have a supportive family, you know how much that's worth. And sadly, sadly, I think that if you did not have a supportive family, if you did not feel the love, then you're probably even more acutely aware of how much it would be worth because you didn't have it. And so, like, I, I, I kind of can't believe it. You know, a family's love and support is so important. And this Mississippi family was arrested for cheering at their daughter's high school graduation. And I, for one, don't blame them for being happy, especially in Mississippi, where finishing a high school is probably a rare event. I mean, you need opposable thumbs just to be able to pick up the pencils. So there's that. Attica, go on. <laughs> Is that how they cheer in Mississippi? Yeah. USA Headline News. I'm Kelly Sloan. Former House Speaker Dennis Haster will appear in court today. The former GOP congressman has been indicted on banking charges related to what appears to be a case of extortion in which he allegedly was paying off someone to hide a secret. It's unclear whether prosecutors will give any more details about that secret at the arraignment. A person familiar with the allegations tells the AP the payments were intended to conceal claims that Haster had sexually molested someone during his teaching and coaching years in suburban Chicago. That was AP correspondent Diane Kepley. An Obama administration official says it could take at least three to five years for Iraq to defeat ISIS. But Lieutenant General John W. Hesterman III says the air campaign has been successful. The thought that we're observing large numbers of dash terrorists and not killing them anywhere is fiction. But yesterday, President Obama confirmed training Iraqi forces needs to happen more quickly. This is USA Headline News. What should I do? I'm so scared. I only had someone to talk to. No one knows about this but me. Imagine the mental anguish a woman faces when she has to make the choice between life and death of her unborn child. 84% of post-abortive women say they felt abortion was their only option. Three in five women who boarded a Save the Storks bus chose life. Yes, three in five chose to save their unborn's life. Save the Storks is on a mission to save lives, putting the best mobile medical units on the streets of every city in the U.S. Visit BraveMother.org and see the power of the mission. Save the Storks mobile units are placed in areas where abortion vulnerable women are likely to be. Areas like abortion clinics and university campuses. Donate today and help educate and empower abortion-minded expectant mothers to choose life for their unborn babies. Donate today at BraveMother.org. That's BraveMother.org. Saving mothers one baby at a time. Trending. 
In the NHL, Game 3 of the Stanley Cup Finals saw the Lightning beat the Blackhawks in Chicago 3-2. to Cedric Paquette scored the game-winning goal just over three minutes to go in the game. And Ben Bishop finished with 36 saves for Tampa Bay as they grab a 2-1 series lead. In soccer at the Women's World Cup, the USA opened up tournament play against Australia. Megan Rapino had a big game for the U.S. Spinning is Rapino shooting it, subtracted, and he has to score. Goal from Fox Sports 1, one of two goals for Megan Rapino as the USA beats Australia 3-1. In baseball games to note, Royals top the Twins 3-1. Kansas City moves percentage points in front of Minnesota for first place in the AL Central. Blue Jays won their sixth straight, beating the Marlins 11-3. And the White Sox take care of the Astros 3-1. Chicago starting pitcher Chris Sale struck out 14 Houston hitters. I'm Eddie Garcia. We are Fox Sports! Now, a year in rock spotlight, 1967. In January of 1967, Los Angeles band The Doors released their debut album, which eventually goes to number two, and features the single Light My Fire, which goes to number one in July. The Rolling Stones released Ruby Tuesday, an ode to a groupie written by Keith Richards. The song takes them to number one in the U.S. in March. And San Francisco band The Jefferson Airplane released a surrealistic pillow album, scoring two top ten hits with White Rabbit and Somebody to Love. Don't you want somebody to love? Don't you need somebody to love? Don't you love somebody to love? You better find somebody to love. In March of 67, Buffalo Springfield re-releases their debut album to include the hit single For What It's Worth. In April of 67, Give Me Some Lovin' by the Spencer Davis Group goes to number seven in the U.S. with vocals by 17-year-old Steve Winwood. And in May, Elvis Presley marries his 21-year-old girlfriend Priscilla in Las Vegas. He had been dating her since she was 14. Way to go, Elvis. In May, Mitch Ryder hits number four with Devil with a Blue Dress, Good Golly, Miss Molly. And the Jimi Hendrix Experience released their debut in the UK. In July, they toured the U.S. as the opening act for The Monkees in support of the U.S. album release. Keep listening to iHeartRadio for more from 1967, coming up. Mom, Dad, I'm in eighth grade now. Those years of peer pressure are way behind me. Right now, alcohol is the last thing on my mind. So please... Don't have a real conversation with me about drinking. Like you said, I'm too young, right? Real kids are curious about alcohol. 40% try it by the 8th grade. Start a real conversation at underagedrinking.samsa.gov. Talk early, talk often, get others involved. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. Go ahead, favorite the show, and enjoy AD on the go. iHeartRadio presents AD. So how far off are we now from uh, Colbert taking over the uh, the Letterman time slot? Uh, how how long? How, how far away is that, Von Kauser? Like September is it? September twentieth. He's just started posting videos. Yeah, like just cool. well, this one where he was trying to write a theme song for his new show. <laughs> What time is it? It's late. What show is it? It's show. My name's Stephen Colbert. From my head down to my feet. Where I keep my toe. Uh, the, 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 the show. Show will be so great. It'll be a big success. You can watch it on TV. On the station. Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs> Oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes. Whew. Done. Next. The Late Show with Stephen Colbert starting September 8th. Yeah! <laughs> uh, you know, I think my curiosity as far as what's going to go on with that is is pretty high. Just because he's a guy that... Uh, he's got to be dropping the Stephen Colbert Comedy Central persona, the, the right wing, you know, sort of like O'Reilly ripoff. Like, that can't be a thing anymore, right? Uh, like, you think he's going to ditch that, right? Von Kauser, it's probably not going to have anything to do with politics. He's just going to be a host. And we don't know who Stephen Colbert is. We know the character that he's played. But, I mean, do you know anything about this, Von Kauser? You're very tight yeah. in his show business circles. We shall is see. Is he keeping his persona? Nobody knows. 
it uh, gives me cause for pause as much as I enjoyed that and thought it was funny that he's messing around with music. I hope he's not trying to, like, out Fallon Jimmy Fallon, you know? I don't like, know. I have a feeling I, he's an in-betweener. Do you know what I mean by that? Um, no. Somebody's Go going to come after him. Somebody amazing is going to come after him and take it. Uh, oh. You know, like, who, so you, who was the first host of The Daily Show? 